I'm Erin Ryan, political commentator, comedy writer, and host of Crooked Media's Hysteria. And I'm co-host Alyssa Mastromonaco, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff for President Obama. Each week on Hysteria, we are joined by a team of hilariously opinionated ladies to discuss the headlines from the serious to the absurd. We cover everything from reproductive rights to rom-coms and break down the political news of the week and cultural stories that affect women's lives. New episodes of Hysteria drop every Thursday. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. How's your mental health? I'm listening with Shakira. You know, I think that with the pandemic and everything, we've learned to seize the moment, seize the day. And I feel that in a way that has changed us all, we have to live in the present. And I, I picked up this new hobby. It just kind of forced me to be more outdoors and enjoy nature. And I discovered surfing and I completely got addicted to it. And it's never too late to learn a new skill. Explore more at imlistening.org. What up, everybody? 10 a.m. in the District of Columbia points north, south, east, and west. You're listening to B. Mitch and Finley. Woo! What a football weekend, B. Yeah, man. Hey, they Some came. good games out there. They brought it out there. The Cincinnati Bengals are going to the Super Bowl. The, the, say that one more time. The Cincinnati Bengals are going to the Super Bowl. The Icky Shuffles. They haven't been really relevant since the Icky Shuffle. But one thing that we mentioned out there, I think everybody here needs to hear. 2-14 and 14 in 2019 were the Cincinnati Bengals. They're playing in the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl from the 2021 season, which will be played in February of 2022 in Los Angeles. That is two years, people. Got a quarterback. Two years, they're there. We've heard it takes three to five. I think that three to five is a little bit too much. The standards has to be changed. We need to figure it. We got to find it, figure it out. And if you don't get a Joe Burrow, you've had enough draft picks already that the team, the side of the ball that you've chosen them on should be damn good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's remarkable watching that football yesterday. And you've got two just electric quarterbacks in Burrow and Mahomes. And their styles are different, but they're both fantastic players, right? I think Jackson played yesterday, though. Played the second half? Yeah, the second half was Jackson Mahomes. I think. Ah, that was garbage. I I mean, they were just very, very. the, The first half, it's funny. If you look on social media, there were like a million posts of like, Nobody can touch the Chiefs when they're playing like this. This game is over, all those sorts of things. Yeah, the first half was over. I mean, you and I were texting. You were calling it a blowout. I said it was going to be a blowout, and I thought it would be, but for some reason, Pat Mahomes decided he was going to play Little League football and forget how to damn throw the ball down the field without doing all the whirly pearlies. I think Andy made a mistake, too, before halftime. You don't have the time. Just kick and take the points. Well, you think your quarterback is going to do the right thing. Instead of just, but early on in that game, the Chiefs were on fire. Yeah. the 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 laser touchdown Not throw to Tyreek Hill, lady sings. the Tyreek Hill touchdown in the corner of the end zone. I think it was the first score of that game. That throw was unbelievable, just unbelievable, an absolute cannon. Mm-hmm. But you play two halves. You know, like remember throughout the season, we kept talking about how good the team did this, and I kept saying. I need to see them play a whole game of football or stop being so horrible in the first half of the season and try to make it up in the second half. That's exactly what they uh, put on uh, display yesterday. You can't do it one half and don't do it the other. The NFL is 60 minutes, and the Chiefs did not play 60 minutes yesterday. And you said one thing. You said but the Bengals will continue to fight. They're fighters, And man. believe me. When you go out there and you don't put somebody away and you leave them chances and opportunities, the game that happened yesterday is exactly what happens to you. Listen to just the Chiefs' drive charts. First half, 11 plays, 84 yards, touchdown. Seven plays, 75 yards, touchdown. 
eight plays, 67 yards, touchdown. Then the last dri- the last drive of the first half ended at the half because Tyreek Hill got tackled at the two-yard line. Yep. Should have taken the points there. Listen to how much this changes in the second half, B. Mm-hmm. Five plays, 16 yards, punt. Five plays, 17 yards, punt. Two plays, seven yards, INT. Yeah. Three plays, negative two yards, punt. Three plays, negative four yards, punt. That one stood out to me the most because there was this quick, after the Bengals tied it up, there was this quick back and forth where Mahomes threw a pick and then Burrow threw one right Right behind it. Yeah. And I always think about, you would say this after Washington would throw picks. Just because you throw a pick doesn't mean the defense can't get a stop. There you go. I mean, the Bengals' defense, for all we want to talk about, Burrow and Jamar Chase, I thought T. Higgins was fantastic, um, Joe Mixon. That Bengals' defense in the second half allowed less than 100 yards of offense. Yeah. They, they made what? What's Two that, interceptions. That word I always use starts with an A. They made there's a lot. There's one word you use that starts with an A. Nah, I'm not sure we're allowed just, to say. When it I'm on talking air. about how what a team is supposed to do, when you're giving up 75 yard, 80 yard drives, adjustments. Is that the word you for? There you go. They did that, and they found a way where. So it's not the word that rhymes with bass mole. That's yeah, what I was thinking. they wouldn't let. They wasn't letting um, Patrick Mahomes throw in rhythm. They were making him have to run around, and when he started running around, I think he got a little dizzy. And he started doing some of the stuff that his brother does. A lot of TikTok dances. Yeah. I mean, there there was a – it's tough with Mahomes because early on in the year when the Chiefs were kind of scuffling, I think the Chiefs were three and four at one point. Maybe it wasn't quite that bad. Maybe it was two and three. But everybody's – the question became, oh, has the league figured Mahomes out? Because he's trying to go deep. Everybody's playing too high, not getting beat deep. They haven't figured him out, I'll tell you that. And early on in that game, the the Bengals pass rush could not get home. Who's 91? Um, is it Hendrickson? Hendricks, isn't it? Mm-hmm. He's a baller. Yeah. I think he had 14 sacks on the season. Um, in the first half, his pass rushes reminded me. You know what they really reminded me of? And I, I made a note of this. Kerrigan? He looks like Kerrigan. You see a big white dude, 91, trying to overpower people. But in the first half of that game, he was just rushing right past Mahomes on the outside. There was no counter move. There was no nothing. It reminded me of Chase Young against Josh Allen. Remember in that Bills game week three for Washington, how Chase just ran past Josh Allen for the whole game? Yep. That's what it reminded me of. And you know what he did in the second half? Changed it up. He started getting a little bit of an inside leverage on on the tackle. And, I mean, that pass rush all of a sudden was able to get home. Trey Hendrickson. Yeah, I mean. From, from Florida Atlantic, 6'4", 270. I'm going to say that one more time. Florida Atlantic. They drafted a guy. The Saints drafted him in the third round, 2017. And somebody taught him how to play football consistently. They also that linebacker Hubbard played really well for them. Um, I guess he's the other D end. I think he had two sacks in the game. But that yeah, pass yeah. rush, ninety four, that pass rush started to get to Mahomes, yeah. and and just everything fell apart. It, it was their secondary were they were in position in that second half to where they didn't allow a lot of people to come open. Because you watch Pat begin to scramble, and you see how his receivers normally start just going to different areas. They had somebody waiting on them. But I, I, I can't. I mean, there was a lot that I noticed in there. I, I believe that the Bengals' OC is Brian Callahan. I think that's Bill Callahan's son. I, I thought, I thought he called a really good game. I thought the way they used the screen game. Inside the red zone. I mean, we saw the Samaj Piran touchdown early in that game. I think Piran could have had another one. If if you remember, Burrow was mad at him because he he went out to the right flat when the play design was clearly to the left, and he had a wall of blockers to the left, and he just went the wrong way. Um, it it was 
it seemed like after they after the Chiefs didn't score at the goal line there early, they were just chasing those points the rest of the game mm-hmm. and, and just never felt comfortable. Um, one thing I did like, and, and I'm curious if you noticed this too, B, even on the first drive, I thought there was it was they were letting the the wideouts in the corners play pretty physically. Yeah, a- and as long as that is called evenly, I'm cool with it. Let them play in that game. They, they did they in that game total six penalties. The other game they didn't. Two on the Chiefs, four on the Bengals. Let you get to this level, you get to the AFC title game. Let them play. These guys know what they're doing. If something's egregious, you got to call it. But otherwise, if it's a little hand fighting, a little defensive holding, whatever it is, let them play, man. I'd much rather have that than the alternative. Yeah. And I think a lot of these referees at this time of the year, they want you to know who they are too now. Which is And and people people got to realize it's human beings doing this thing. And we all, at some level, like to hear our name called. And... Too many times the refs try to become a part of the game. In that game, they didn't, and I appreciate that. I do, and work. I'm sure TV likes it too. Dude, speaking of TV, I did they have the audio? I know you were at um, watching the game. Did you have the audio on at halftime? I uh, wouldn't pay attention to it though. So I was on a plane. So all I'm doing is paying attention, and it's it's interesting being on a plane where. Like, I didn't have my – I couldn't be on Twitter. Like, I couldn't be on these Can other things. Can we make you think you're on a plane every day from 10 to 2? <laughs> so, <laughs> halftime of this game is – it's a CBS game. So, normally, they're studios in New York, right? And and I, I like the CBS um, crew. It's uh, James Brown, who's a legend and a DC guy. I, I think Nate Burleson's a star. I like uh, Boomer and – they have Bill Cower, and I think they have Phil Sims also. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a good crew, right? I, I like them. They were on the sideline of the game, and there was like a, I think it was a country music performance. I don't really know what yeah. the performance oh, was. And you couldn't really hear them. It was so loud they couldn't hear one another. Yeah, yeah. And, and they were openly saying like, like. Well, Boomer would be like, well, Nate, I have no idea what you just said, so I'm going to hopefully not say the same thing. But maybe you should just... How does that happen in the AFC title game? Well, yeah, you need to... I think it's, it, it comes down to the person that went out earlier. Some field find producer Find out or where, the, where the band is going to be <laughs> and make sure you set that damn stage on the other side of the field, not same side. It's going to be a problem. Totally. I, I mean... <laughs> I mean, that's such a random thing, but if anybody saw that no, halftime. I, I, I now know what you're talking about because I know it came on and they started talking and all I heard was music. So I'm like, okay, I will start talking. So I'll start talking to people around me. Right. It was, I mean, it appeared James Brown was a little frustrated by the situation because it appeared they maybe went to commercial break a little earlier because he was just like, I can't hear a thing we're doing. Let's it, see what's coming on next. There you go. <laughs> Um, it's crazy though to, to to even try and go and do something like that. Yeah, I mean, in that situation, this is like how many people were watching that game? You think thirty million? I don't know. A it lot. Might, it might have been more a lot. That. I I took a bunch of notes during that game. Um, I couldn't help but notice the Bengals pulled off a really good squib kick just before halftime. Uh, what? And and I just imagine Buffalo Bills fans watching that. And I, I mean, I think like six seconds came off the clock just before halftime. If if you go back and watch that, it was like a really well placed squib kick. What in and, the world? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, now see, this, if you're a Bills, here fan, you go too. I thought about this last night. Everybody that last week that wanted the playoff structure, the, the no, the overtime structure to change, it's not guaranteed that the team that gets the ball is going to win. We saw Kansas City get the ball. Did they score? No. Leave it how it is. All you have to do, play a little defense. What did the Cincinnati Bengals do in overtime? Everybody that told me it's guaranteed the team that wins the toss is going to win the game. Didn't happen, did it? It should have been a pick, a walk-off pick six on the play before the interception. But it still didn't happen. Mahomes though. was not right, dude. So my whole thing is let the people play it. 
play by the pro rules, and let, let's stop trying to make football easy for the people. You, you build a team. Don't build an offense. Don't build a defense. Build a damn team. There's all three phases. How about this? The uh, New York Giants are announcing their new head coach, Brian Dable, um, offense coordinator from the Washington, from the Buffalo Bills, uh, now the head coach of the New York Giants. This is, this is going on right now. There's a press conference. Dable was asked if the Giants could be like the Bengals and turn into a Super Bowl contender in two years. He said, what? He said, listen, man, right now I'm just trying to hire a staff. <laughs> hey, but th- that is what? New York media. Honestly. We don't want to hear the mumbo jumbo. Tell us how you're going to create a winner. That's what we want to hear. We're going to hold you to it. We're not going to sit up here and let you have this talk about dictate how long it takes. No. Teams have done it in a year, two years. Worse to Super Bowl. Whether they win it or not, I think anybody in this town will take what happened for the Cincinnati Bengals. Hell yeah. So let's that three to five. No, no, no. We're going to put it at three. We need a winner next year. This year needs to be a winner. That's the way I see it. Now, there's there's so much to unpack here because I want to talk. We've kind of only talked to Bengals Chiefs, and I love it's cool seeing. I'm a big college football fan. I think that LSU team may be the greatest college football team ever. I think off, at least offensively, they were the greatest college football team. I know some team of them ever. are Miami teams from back in the day would have the they would beg to differ with you. I, I'm saying at least offensively. That team was loaded, B. Oh, yeah. I mean, just Chase and Jefferson and Burrow, it, it's loaded. But it, there's some great Miami teams. There, there's been a lot of great college football teams. I'm, I'm not trying to enter into that debate, right? But watching Burrow become this Hollywood star now and doing it for Cincinnati, which is such a – I mean, we looked it up last week. I think it's the 34th biggest market in the United States. It's largely an afterthought. Yeah. Let's be real. Like, yeah. for 30 years, nobody's talked about the Bengals. Well, guess what? You're going to be talking about them now. Since uh, Joe Burrow rolled in town, they're talking now. And he is just such – he never looked phased. They're down 21-3, and they show him on the sideline. He wasn't even blinking. Joe cool. Joe, Bur- Joe Burrows are hard to find. But it doesn't mean you can stop looking. You might not have to find a Joe Burrow. You just better find somebody. Things that are worthwhile are always hard. If not, everyone would do them. Yeah. Let's talk Rams, Niners, and perhaps Kyle Shanahan's regularity of blowing late. Hi, I'm Femi Redwood. I'm the host of a new podcast called Beyond Black History Month. I know, I know, I know, you're tired of hearing the same Black History Month stories, so am I. This is different. We celebrate Black excellence while having nuanced conversations about race. Beyond Black History Month is super inclusive and it's pretty dope, for real, for real. So subscribe. Leads, next on The Fan. Break the neck to keep their holes in check. Sweater brother Major Lee. I don't know why your girl keeps paging me. Tell me that she needs me. Cries when she sees me. And every time she sees me, she squeezes me. Lady, take it easy. I don't want it if it's that easy. Nothing nothing worthwhile is easy. Understand that. It's hard, it's hard to land elite quarterbacks. But you got to try, Landfill. Cody. You're a proud 49ers fan. You've had a layover in San Francisco once. That's that's your tie to the Bay Area. Yes, indeed. Proud Niners fan. How are you feeling about that thing yesterday? I am so upset, but it was to be expected. How could you not? You look at that team, you look at the quarterback, you look at your leader, that's what happens. You don't hear guys around the league talk about their quarterback the way that the 49ers players do. Debo, they say, we love our quarterback. We'll stand up for him. You know who else says that type of thing? Guys like Chase Young for Taylor Heineke. Guys that they know can't get the job done. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Cody just just sparked something. 
the quarterbacks that are great and super good, you never hear the players on the team having to say anything of that nature. The quarterback that consistently fail, falter, or don't do what they're supposed to do, you always hear their teammates say, oh, we love that guy. He He's our guy. We'll fight for him. You know what they're probably doing? If you go look at their text thread, they're like, hey, man, hey, hey, can I get – Joe, you, can I get over that with you? Aaron, man, come on. I, I mean, I can – you don't have to throw it to Adams all the time. It, it, you, you, you're right on point. Quarterbacks that are legitimate don't need people to say, we'll fight for him. You remember back to my quarterback? T.O. was fighting for Romo because he was garbage when it came down to crunch time. Put up numbers, but crunch time he wasn't. So he had to support his quarterback. You don't have to support great quarterbacks because their play supports them enough. So I know we hear people talking about, let's get, uh, what's my man, Garoppolo. I think you got to float on right past him, sail on down the line, or any old song you can come up that talk about flying past somebody, that's what the hell you need to do when it comes to Garoppolo. We're going to have a Garoppolo discussion at 11 o'clock, okay? Okay. We'll we'll try to hold off that here. Right now, I want to talk about Kyle Shanahan. Cody, help me keep track of the blown leads by Kyle. We got Falcons OC against the Pats. That was 28-3, to I believe. And they lost that game. 28-3. to Now, listen, not all, especially at that point in time, he's... The offensive coordinator is not even the head coach. So it doesn't all fall on Yeah, him. but if I'm not tossing it up, I take more time off the clock, and I also run the ball a couple times. Run the ball. I can keep the ball out of the hands of the other guy. But no, if I keep throwing it up, I can throw interceptions. I get incompletions. You get clock stoppage. Sure. Then Kyle was in the Super Bowl as the head coach. When was that game? Just a few seasons ago, Cody? And did they have a lead in the second half of that game? 20-10 to 10 going to the fourth quarter. So, so that's a double-digit fourth-quarter lead, correct? Yes. And it was also a double-digit fourth-quarter lead with the Falcons and the Patriots, correct? Correct. And then yesterday, Brian. Yes. Did they have a double-digit lead in the fourth quarter in the NFC Championship? I think so. Listen, you can blame Garoppolo for a lot of this. The interception at the end was horrible, but all of a sudden, the Rams' defensive line was able to establish kind of some dom. Like, let's be real about that game. Sam Fran was punking the Rams for most of that game. But then late, it just, their last three drives in that game. Yep. Or hell, I'll give you the whole second half for the Niners. They opened with a punt. Then they scored. I think that was the touchdown throw to Kittle. In the fourth quarter, the Niners had three possessions. The first drive, six plays, 41 yards, punt. That may have their second possession of the fourth quarter. Three plays, zero yards, punt. Mm. Their final possession, and this is now when they're trailing, three plays, negative three yards, INT. Mm -hmm. I mean, that can't all fall on the quarterback. Okay, let me me break it down for you just a little bit. We always seem to say it doesn't fall on the quarterback completely. But when your offense that works doesn't really include your quarterback, that says a lot to me. Sure. You said early in the game they were pucking them. They were running the football effectively and Just leading. owning the line of scrimmage. Leading. But when you decide to start including the quarterback as they're shown multiple games, he does something that kind of makes you go, what the hell? Why did they change? Garoppolo is not – Kyle Shanahan has shown, I don't trust him enough to win games for me. 
I don't trust him enough to make the game plan about his arm or his legs. Our game plan starts 75% of us running the football effectively. And I think that's the thing that people don't like to put out. If you're going to, if you're looking to go get a quarterback and you're going to pay the type of money that Garoppolo would make, he needs to be able to be the guy to carry you. He can't carry a football team. He probably can't carry And his coach has proven it because he doesn't like to put the game in his hands. And when he does, he normally throws, as you call it, a YOLO ball. Lewis Riddick had a a comment last night that I thought was pretty interesting where Jimmy really seems to struggle is going over the middle where there's traffic and, and more going on. So it's cool that you can try to understand his deficiencies. We can't have a quarterback that can't throw it over the middle. It's similar to Taylor Heineke, who kind of doesn't have the arm to get it to the edges in in short yardage situations. That's a significant limitation. You got to have a quarterback that can throw it all over the yard. Yeah. So I, I don't think Garoppolo's the answer. The other side of this. Sean McVay was chasing that whole game. I I think because of their inability to get scores early. I mean, if you think about it, in the first half, the Rams left at least 10 points on the field. That Sabonic, I don't know what what Jack Squarek, what's what's the guy's name? Mm-hmm. Dropped six. That, that yeah. was six. Oh, and that yeah. was schemed up. The ball was there. Exactly. That's a touchdown. You yeah. can't drop that ball. It should cut that dude before the Super Bowl. And then Stafford, ball bounces around down at the goal line. That should have been at least a field goal. Mm-hmm. I mean, th- those are the kind of things that happen. But the Rams, when they were unable to score, and then all of a sudden you go into halftime and they're losing, and they'd been playing better, I'd, I'd say at least offensively, than the Niners, it seemed like McVay was just chasing. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, he he gets a little tight. A guy that just broke up with his girlfriend and finally he's trying to talk to girls at a bar. Like, well, it's just not going well, dude. What we saw yesterday, whether it was a coach or a player, quarterbacks at this specifically, when you go into a game and you are the favorite or you are supposed to be the guy that everyone has been saying, you know how to do this, that, and the other, when it gets to the point those the clocks start getting closer to zeros and you haven't done what you do, and the pressure and the stress gets on you, they play like the other team played early on. Totally. I mean, you watch. How many times did that game clock get down below three seconds? Yeah. So, so, and, and, and as good as Sean is scheming up stuff, Sean has shown the propensity when he playing against top-notch quarterbacks, or I mean coaches, and people that could get to him, and it doesn't work like he had planned it, he gets a little tight. Couldn't even stick a needle in there. He gets rather tight. And he has to get over that hump. Or when he gets against some of these people who could read him, just like he reads everybody else, he's going to always have that little problem. But he gets tight. Dude, I think he, I think Kyle Shanahan's in his head a little bit, specifically that matchup, because he knows, you know, I think he's, I think they'd lost the last six. They'd lost two in a row this yeah. year. Um, I think... The second half, time management, the challenge on the use check fumble when he's clearly down was so dumb and just so desperate. I, 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 what do you do when you have messed around and you hadn't done what you're supposed to do and it gets late, you start blaming and, 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 and reaching? But he did. Right. You know, he was in a position he didn't expect to be in. He hadn't had a, the bit, the things he had thought would happen didn't. So late in the game, he was just reaching, Stretch, mm-hmm. scratching for everything he can get. Totally. I, I, I just – Like, ref, help me out here, please. I, I wrote this down. Troy Aikman said, it feels like Sean McVay is chasing it after that challenge. And Troy was totally accurate. I, I tell you what. Uh, two former Cowboys quarterbacks commented on yesterday's games. I think the one with three Super Bowl rings did a much, much better job. Um, I, I I think... So, what, you're trying to say Romo got on your nerves again? I'm just saying that Troy did an excellent job. Um, 
I also, B, I don't know if you, if you agree with me here. Really, really impressive wide receiver play yesterday in that game. I mean, obviously, and maybe calling Debo a wide out is unfair to what he does. Debo is a football player. Totally. He's, He's he a is so impressive. Yeah. But I noticed that him and Cup do a really good job. And I don't know that they would do this. There's a level of selling out and going for it in an NFC championship game mm-hmm. that players probably don't hit week eight. You know what I mean? Debo might all the time. Yeah, he does. I thought there were multiple times yesterday, especially on third and longs, where they're still running pseudo bubble screens, where they're just counting on their wideouts to make the play, that both Cup and Debo were super cognizant of where they needed to get to for first downs. Oh, yeah. And, and they would take on what was probably some pretty punishing action to get past the sticks. Yeah. I was just thoroughly impressed by that. Um I think it is, that that's basically knowing your situation. Circling back to the first game, for Jamar Chase to be that good of a blocking wide out as a rookie. He plays in the SEC, dude. Dude, but some of that blo- blocking at skill positions is about desire. It's about desire, but you look at the you SEC. You know what I mean? It's not technique. The it's, SEC is loaded with. Football, like running sure. backs. corners and safety. And can running make backs plays. that can yeah. take the distance. So what happens is the same way that the running backs block for receivers to do certain things, they give it back to each other. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's like a, it's a constant battle. When you're around it and you know it and you see it all the time, it becomes second nature to you. And, and there's one wideout we haven't mentioned yet that I recognize if you're a fan of the New York Giants or you're a fan of the Cleveland Browns, that it may you might not like him. It may really upset you to see what he's doing right now. But Odell Beckham is competing at a level. I don't want to overstate it because I know how great he was in some of those early years with the Giants. But the want to, the desire from Beckham, downfield blocking. That, it, it, Knowing he's going to take a monster shot. That cheap shot he took on the sideline. He was going down because he knew what was coming. Mm-hmm. Still got smoked. I mean, Beckham might be playing his best football. But or certainly his most important football. You get on that team. You've had all these chances. And you get on that football team that's loaded. Cooper Cup was a triple threat. He won, He had the best, most yards, yep. receptions, and touchdowns. Okay. When you get on that team right now, you can't act up. So what do you do? You look around and say, okay, damn, this guy, he is special. What am I going to do? You start imitating what he does. In practice, you watch him doing certain things. You watch how he runs his route. Odell now does a lot less antics, and he plays football now. Yeah, he celebrates after he gets something done, but his antics were like throughout the game. Were like, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Now. He goes and he plays football. And guess what? Camera going to find you then. So I just think it's a, you finally got him to lock into his football mind instead of his entertainment mind. Early on when he first got in the league, he wanted to entertain everybody. Entertain by playing football. And then it's okay when you do all that other stuff. And he, he would put up numbers and do things, but his team wasn't winning. Now he's on a team. He got a lot of champions, a lot of Hall of Famers on that squad. And you have guys on that squad that can probably whoop his ass if he gets out of line. Aaron Donald, Von Miller. I, how about when Aaron Donald had the whole defense on there the sideline? Listen. That one big dude Bengals, looked like he could be your granddaddy. He was ba- like, yes, sir. He did. The 94, yeah. he did. Big four. The Bengals have, st- have the star. The Rams got stars. Yeah. That's it. We're going to keep it going. I want to I want to rank coolness factor. In this Super Bowl. Plus, we got a Jimmy G discussion to have and a rebuild discussion to have. Don't go anywhere. B. Mitchell Finley, 1067. Good tweet here from Kevin Powers talking about 
Romo and Aikman announcing the games yesterday. Kevin says, Romo's self own regarding dropping a field goal snap was fantastic last night. The fact that he had to explain it was even better. I did notice that. I made note of it. Romo was talking about, you got to kick on third down just in case something goes wrong. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, I remember, you know, somebody botching a snap in a pretty big game. And Nance just like totally missed it. So then Romo circled back and was like, hey, Jim, I'm not sure you, you get it. I'm saying I botched a snap. The joke was funny. Here's what, I, I don't know much about telling jokes, but when you have to explain them, makes them a little lame. Yeah. Like, yeah. just let it be out there. And and don't try to explain it. Um, it was a good line. It was good self-deprecation. Um, I thought Romo was much better this game than he was in the Cowboys game. And maybe some of that is just, and I don't blame him. I'm sure he roots for the Cowboys. Um, I, I thought Romo had some good analysis that, that largely the Bengals did what he was saying to do. Just to, to not to get away from the run, but to run less on first down. Yeah, because they, they know it. You know that's that's the your tendencies. The thing I've always talked about when you're watching football and you're trying to watch film, the p- teams that are looking at the defense, look at what you do too. Because right. if if you realize, okay, damn, every first down we run the ball, maybe the defense knows that too. So how about come in and play action pass them, or just don't play action pass and just drop back and throw them because they're probably going to have a defense that's catered for stop the run. Like they probably have an extra linebacker there on the field go. instead yeah. of a corner. Exactly. You probably get that one-on-one coverage with Chase on the outside. I thought um, this was something you talked about earlier with Higgins and Boyd in that one thing that stood out to me was all of these teams just have a number of players like a number of skill position players. Who was my guy? I wrote this down. This might be my last note. And I thought of you, B, the way you always scream about this. Um, shoot. Number 11, I think. Um, no, the Bengals. Number 11. He was their punt returner. I want to say it's Walker. What was the name, Kodo? I have Trent Taylor. Taylor, thank you. Look this up. I, on the broadcast, they said, you know where they got that guy? Where? On the broadcast, they said they called him up from the practice squad Saturday night. Mm. Talk about coaching 53. So, so had that's, people, that's going 60 deep. So this, let me see, noble idea. Guys that on my practice squad are guys that I might have some faith in that could probably help me at some point. <laughs> that, that's what that meant. Or not not that you have to go find people outside of the practice squad because the people on your practice squad are just there. They don't know anything. That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, I uh, I want hungry people on my practice squad that are looking for an opportunity. And I want them, and the way I know they're looking for an opportunity, they practice like that every day. So whenever somebody gets hurt, all I have to do is go right in my building to the person that's been learning my offense or defense or special teams and call them up. I don't have to go look for somebody outside if I chose the right people. I, I just, that stood out to me. He had played in every game since week 15. So right. he had some sort of awareness out there. Totally, but they're still calling a guy up. From their practice squad. The, uh, I, I tell you what, he actually had, I think he had that dirty hit last night. Um, but the kid, Scott, on the Rams secondary, that safety. He will hit you. Nick Scott from Penn State. Nick yeah. Scott, he only started playing, in, I want to say, in the playoffs. As they're, as they those injuries started to pile up. Yeah. I mean, but, but that's they, what it takes to win they are, late they in the are year. They are treating everyone like, at some point, I'm going to need you. I've said this in this town for multiple coaching staffs. We seem to only coach the top 22, offense and defense. Special teams is whatever it's going to be. It's a different unit. But we seem to want to make sure our starting on off, starters on offense and defense, we take, overly take care of them. We practice them up and all that's the time. Something you- the, the other people need to be able to know if something happens and, I've, and I have to go to you, I should have faith that I can, I can believe in you. We both blasted Gruden for that yeah. during his era. 
because once it fell off, it fell off hard. Yes. It seems to have maintained. Off, the offensive line has been much better. I'll say the that. The offensive line. Because has, when the, the offensive line used to have coaches, injuries, it was a train wreck. But the offensive line coaches, for a certain extent, they've all been good. But I, I Even would, Callahan had his guys playing. I'll look specifically to wide receiver. Yeah. Curtis Samuel goes down. The ship sinks. There's there's nothing else there. Mm-hmm. Like, you are drafting guys. You're signing guys. But you did have a hungry one. Carter, DeAndre did well. Yeah, and, but, and, I, and a lot me, of it to me is just that's his makeup. But like, I, I like DeAndre Carter a lot. Great story, really nice young mm-hmm. man, played well. But we talk about ash burning ourselves and all these things. That doesn't come anywhere close to what T. Higgins or Tyler Board give you. No. Not your number one, but your number two, your number three. Yeah, I, I mean, you go down the list. Look at look at what the Rams have. Yeah, Cup Beckham Van Jefferson. Jefferson is kid a was a, kid was good at Florida. He's a, he's a beast. I, I mean, look at the receiver groups for the two teams that are in the Super Bowl. Ignore the quarterbacks. Just look at the receiver groups. No, no. You've got elite first rounders, and then you've got guys you found and have developed into stars. See, I I listen and I understand exactly what you're saying, but this is I think people have to be very very careful with that notion of change culture and character stuff. You know what character really matters if you just can't play football? You need to be able to have character guys in certain positions to be able to handle some of those guys that are just damn well good football players, but they got a little issue. They get, they touched a little certain. You can't have all choir boys on your football team and win. And as I told you, we did the thing with Coach Gibbs the other day, and Gary Clark, he was like, Coach, you had me and you had art. You had Charles and you had Dexter. You had Wilbur and you had Monty. He had it always seemed to have somebody that was on one end of the spectrum and the other was on the other end. But everything came together on the football field to where it was a consistent, legitimate threat. And you watch these teams, and they have people like that. Odell, you would think, is a crazy man. Not on that team anymore. You see? So here... You got Terry. You may need a rambunctious receiver that has his ability, though. But you can't get a rambunctious receiver that doesn't have his ability. And you can't get a super character guy who's going to be always right, but he can't run no damn routes. Coaches got to bring that out of players and get that. In. All these other teams, they got it. I, I, I look at the three receivers. Like Now you look at this matchup. And I understand what Jalen Ramsey is. But which one is he going to check? Can you check all three of them at one time? All right. Landfill, you prepared for this since you were tweeting out lies about me this morning? Blatant, blatant lies? Brian was hot earlier this morning. No, not hotter than Cody. Let's talk Jimmy Garoppolo next on B. Mitchell Finley. 